Who do you think is better, Buffalo or LSU? Who, what do you think the spread would be if, say, Syracuse were to play Washington? There's one resource I like to use that's called Ken Palm that can break all that down for you, give a better definition and quantify exactly who is better and what that spread will be. I'm going to break that all down for you here in one second. Hey everyone, it's Five Farley. Welcome. Uh, kind of going to go off the cuff here and just uh, break this website down for you and then show you how I use it to become a better capper. I think at the end of this, you can utilize this resource to uh, sharpen up your capping skills and use the data on here to really give quantification to uh, things that you may just have a feeling on uh, prior, which is not good in the sports betting world. Now, if you look at a lot of the top, top cappers, the, the, the best pros out there, they'll typically use a power ranking. Like in the NBA or the NFL, they'll have a power ranking. They'll use that power ranking and they'll have numbers according to that power ranking that would give you an exact spread if those teams were to play each other. And when that number's off by the line that's actually come out, they jump on that because it's off from what they've calculated to be the power ranking and the spread that they would have. So this is a way to utilize that with all 353 teams uh, in NCAA basketball. It's a really good resource. It's very well uh, documented. It's been around a long time. And uh, I'm going to go through it uh, with you here. And again, I apologize for any kind of like... Uh, um, off the cuff speak. I'm just going to kind of run through this and uh, it'll be a little different than giving out my uh, daily plays. So, and by the way, for those of you who don't follow me or don't uh, subscribe to my channel, take a second, do so. My name is Five Farley and uh, uh, I put out daily best bets in uh, all the sports all year round. And uh, so let's go through Ken Palm, or as I call it, KP, uh, when I'm putting out a video. So if you were to go into the site, I'm going to just go from the top, what we're looking at here. You'll see at the top, if you open up KP, you'll see uh, rank, team, conference, win, loss, uh, adjusted efficiency margin, adjusted offense, adjusted defense. If you see that across the top, then we're on the same page. So first, you're going to get a ranking here. The first thing I want to draw your attention to across from the win-loss is going to be that adjust, adjusted efficiency margin. So what that is, that's a very, very important number. And what that is, is it uses a calculation to come up with a figure of how good the team is. And as you see at the top, you'll get a plus 30 or so. Um, depending on when this video, when you're watching this video, right now we have Virginia at the top at a plus 36.5. 0.84, and that's just giving a figure to their strength. Uh, right below that is Duke, Michigan State, Gonzaga. Now you can use that number. Well, I'm going to come back to that in a second. Let's talk about it. the other two. We have adjusted offense, adjusted defense. Now we're talking about how good is is their offense and defense, and that quantifies their offense and defense. If 100 possession possessions were given, how many points would be scored, and then how many would they score, which then gets you to that adjusted efficiency margin. The difference of those two numbers of offense and defense are, is that adjusted efficiency margin. Next to that, we have adjusted tempo. So that's uh, tempo of the game in 40 minutes. Um, how many possessions in 40 minutes? Then we have a luck rating is just a factor that's utilized in there and how predictable the games are. And we have strength of schedule. I'll just start on the left side where adjusted efficiency margin of the opponents that each team plays. And this could be very useful. You'll see a little number next to the plus whatever the number is, you know, plus 5.1, plus 8.77. Next to that, you'll see a ranking number, which is a little smaller. That says where they are in all the 353 teams. Then at the very end, we'll have a non-conference strength of schedule uh, adjusted efficiency margin showing what they did outside of conference. So if we see a team with a, uh, say they play in a Power 5 conference, they have a, an 11-9 and nine record. Um, however, they're starting to get some steam in their conference. Um, you could go to this and say, okay, I see why they're 11-9. and nine. Um, they had one of the most difficult schedules coming into this. I'm trying to find an example right here on the fly here. Um, I'm looking at the very top of the... 
How about Butler? Well, Butler's an okay one. Some of these teams at the top have all played really well, so I'm not getting a very good strength of schedule. There we go. Oklahoma State, 9-11, and losing record. However, they have a pretty good ranking. They had a uh, the 38th hardest uh, non-conference schedule uh, in the country, so maybe justifiably of why they have a losing record. May not be as bad as their record uh, indicates. All right, so now let's talk a little bit of how we can use this data to better our capping skills. So first let's go to adjusted efficient, efficiency margin. That's one of the main numbers that I like to use because what we do here is we quantify how good a team is. So if I wanna know if Auburn is better than Maryland, I can come right to here and I can see, okay, Auburn's a 21.78. They're playing Maryland, who's a 20.15. Yes, Auburn is better. How much so? About a point and a half better on a neutral court. If it really helps once we get into tournament play uh, as well as at the start of the season because then you can cross over divisions. Um, this resource, so one thing to note, gets sharper and sharper as the year goes on. Um, as more data is calculated, now we're getting into our 21st, 22nd, 23rd games for each team. As we get to that point, we're starting to get a lot of data that can really help capping. Now I'm going to get into a little bit more of how I use this resource. So one of the things I do is I use it as a barometer, a, a way of testing, say, hey, if we have, uh, um, I have Iowa State and they're going to be playing, um, they're going to be playing, uh, let's say they're going to play TCU. And I know that uh, they're going to be playing at TCU. Um, how is TCU done against upper echelon opponents? Well, how do we consider it upper echelon? Well, we should probably look at other in-conference teams that rank better than them on a KP scale. So I'm taking my opinion out of it. I'm taking their record out of it because that can be deceiving. So now I'm looking just based on KP's rankings, how they would have done against similar teams in their conference. For example, Kansas. How did they do against Kansas? Um, how did they do against... Um, uh, who else do we have in conference up here? see any other big 12 team Texas Tech um, how'd they do against Texas Tech um, similarly you can look at Iowa State and drop down to TCU look at similar teams Baylor how do we do against Texas um, how do we do against Oklahoma those are very similar teams if they lost to Oklahoma then it could be that we could potentially lose to TCU, who is a better team than Oklahoma. Those are some of the things to uh, take opinion out of it and start using data, start using an actual figure to uh, um, you know, form our opinions. Now, one step further than that, you could also take a look at the spread that would be given in each one of these neutral games. For example, in that one, Iowa State is a 24 and then say TCU is a 17.9, so we're at about 18, so we got about a, a, a six-point spread between the two, and say uh, when they played Baylor, who's right about the same, six-and-a-half-point spread in that game, but they beat them by 18, then you could say that Iowa State typically overperforms when playing an inferior opponent. Those are some of the conclusions we can draw to the practical part of the game um, through using this resource. Uh, now, one thing to note, as I'm saying these situations, that's all neutral court based. One factor you have to apply is home court advantage. So typically when I'm working in the Big Ten, I'm going to add five to six points to the home team, depending on that home team, and in that given game on that road team that's going to be playing against that home team, depending on which court they're playing on. I'm going to add between five and six. Rule of thumb is about four and a half points, four and a half points for the home team. It could drop down to three. It could drop all the way up to six and a half, seven. But typically rule of thumb, home team, about four and a half points. Uh, some you could say five, four and a half, five points right in there. Um, some other people use five. I like four and a half. So um, that's one thing to keep in mind. Neutral court, keep the number the same. But uh, if it's if it's going to be uh, uh, played at the home court, you add four and a half points to that team. Now, one other thing to note is a, a good strategy could be to purely take the KP number of the predicted spread and then check 
what the line actually is, and then if there's a difference, there's things that KP doesn't, doesn't unveil. So there's some things KP can't figure. For example, they don't take into account an injury. Uh, they don't take into account a look ahead. They don't take into account a letdown. So, for example, if once again we have TCU, um, Iowa State, neutral court, it's a six-point spread. However, we're seeing it's a pick em. Well, something's going on that Iowa State is going to be in a letdown spot. Maybe they're looking ahead. They have they have in-state rivalry Iowa next, which is not going to be the case. But, um, you know, they they are going to be playing Kansas next at Kansas. And uh, TCU is... is uh, uh, kind of a oversight. Um, just came off a double overtime loss. They lost their their uh, center. You know, the key part of their offense. You know, there's a lot of factors that can go into that. So you can exploit that by using these KP rankings as well. All right, let's talk about a little bit of other ways that I like to use this. One for totals, going to the adjusted tempo. Uh, if you organize these by ranking of adjusted tempo you'll see right now florida international is the most possessions per 40 minutes at 80 and if we drop all the way down to the slowest team it's virginia then you start to get in some other ones which is great one reason i really like kp is you start getting rankings to teams like maryland eastern shore or unc Asheville. Um, teams that you normally wouldn't have a lot of data on, you can get quantifiable data on those teams. And you know they have low totals, but how low? Well, they actually play at the 350th slowest pace in, uh, in NCAA basketball. Sorry, that was hard for me to say. They're one of the slowest teams in all of college basketball. One team I like to go under on is Siena. Because uh, Siena plays so slow, you can see they're the 352nd slowest tempo team in the country, 61 possess possessions per 40 minute games. Now, in addition to that, we'll see strength of schedule rankings. I do like to utilize that. If I'm looking at someone's record, uh, if I'm looking at why they are the way they are, I'd like to counterbalance the conference record versus the non-conference record to find out who played a tougher schedule coming into the game. Um, it's quite easy to look at uh, some good teams and see they have a fair record and then come here and say, okay, I could take my opinion aside and look at this and see flat out, yes, they played the 18th hardest schedule uh, in the country. It's fair enough. For example, I'm looking at one right now, West Virginia, 9-12. and 12. They have played the 21st hardest schedule in the country. Number one hardest schedule, Kansas, uh, at this point. Now, what about just non-conference uh, hard schedule. How about this Fullerton, Cal State Fullerton, 10th hardest schedule in the country. Did you know that? Um, when you use this resource, you can get numbers like that and realize that uh, even though Fullerton's 9 and 12, they're going to start winning conference games because they had the 10th hardest non-conference schedule. And then they play in the Big West, which is not that difficult of a conference. Look for them to start stepping up and sure enough, they are. So, um, Really good information on here. Hopefully that uh, helps you in uh, better using this resource. Hopefully it's not just confusing. There's a lot of data on here, but I would start with using that adjusted efficiency margin and then find deviations from what the line creates so that you can start keying in on games that have a deviation from what the predicted line should be. So you take your team, or you take the two teams and you take the adjusted efficiency margin number and then the difference in those two numbers is what the line should be and then again we're adding four and a half to five to the home court. Now you'll see there's a point in which it goes negative. So what that's doing is that's saying the average team in NCAA basketball that's splitting it right there and then dropping teams below the average team or rising them above the average team. So for example, I know I can say from this, Winthrop is 1.04 better than the average team in all of college basketball. And if they were to play Weber State, who's minus 0.76, we can add those two, to, we'd be about one point, be about one and a half to two would be the line in that game on a neutral court. 
<clears throat> now let's say they played at, at Weber State. So now that two-point spread would actually be Weber State favored by about two and a half because they're getting four and a half for their home court advantage. So that's how that works. Um, so there you go. I think that's enough for now uh, to at least get someone started on how to use KP. Uh, really, really good information here. Some of this just takes time to get used to, takes time to run games through. College basketball has so many games that uh, you have to really take your time with it. I have used this for years, so I've gotten really used to uh, uh, interacting with the website and uh, pulling what data I like to um, because, again, you, if, you're, if you use a lot of feelings in sports betting, that could be very dangerous. So you want to use quantifiable data and facts as often as possible or to support your feelings. If that's the case, it's to support your feelings. Um, for example, you know, I could say uh, I, I just got a really, you know, kind of wheezy feeling about Nevada this year. I, ju I just think once they play a tough schedule, Nevada's going down. And then why do I think that? Well, I don't know. And then as I look at this, I see, okay, they've actually they, they've played, their strength of schedule is 102nd in the country. Well, they haven't really played anyone that difficult or that difficult of a spot. So, you know, you can kind of back up your feelings with, with uh, the actual, uh, actual information. Or Houston, for example, that's actually a really good one because Houston hasn't really played that difficult of a schedule. And that's not just my opinion. Right here, I can see they played the 166th uh, most difficult schedule in the country not very difficult uh, for a top 25 team, in my opinion, anyway. So there you go. Good luck, everyone. Uh, again, if you like the data, I appreciate it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Follow my picks every day. Daily best bets out every single day. All right, good luck, everyone. See you again soon.